with the government of Bangladesh uh, of great importance and of great significance to us. Uh, let me start uh, by saying, repeating that uh, I, I had the honor yesterday to be received by the Honorable Prime Minister and uh, I also met the Ministers of Foreign Affairs, of uh, Home Affairs and of uh, uh, Disaster uh, uh, Management and Relief, I think this is yeah. the correct title. Um, plus, of course, uh, 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 local officials in Cox's Bazaar, especially the RRC, who is responsible for the management of the refugee response uh, and other officials. Uh, I also met uh, donor ambassadors. I met the uh, UN uh, and international financial institution partners, civil society, NGOs, including uh, very important uh, Bangladeshi NGO partners that we have in this country that are by now the bulk represent the bulk of the response to the, to the crisis. Uh, let me start by saying that, as I told the Honorable, Honorable Prime Minister yesterday morning, I wanted to reassure her also because I read some uh, incorrect <laughs> reports in the press. Uh, I told her the following about Myanmar. First, that I entirely agree with her and with the government of Bangladesh. The solution to this crisis can only be in Myanmar, difficult as it might be. And I want to be emphatic on this point. I said it before, but because there were some conflicting reports that I said different things, I want to repeat it. Then I read the report that I had gone to Myanmar. Unfortunately, I have not gone recently because you know the situation there is quite fluid, but what I said, and I want to repeat, and I explained to the Prime Minister yesterday, UNHCR has a program in Myanmar, including in Rakhine State, uh, of, uh, we call them quick impact projects. We have an agreement with UNDP, United Nations Development Program. Both of us have an agreement with the government of Myanmar that was um, signed before the uh, political changes of last year but which the de facto authorities have now confirmed, which I think is positive. You know, this is not any recognition of the de facto authorities, but this is, uh, uh, you know, these are humanitarian activities. They have to be carried out, no matter what the political context. This is the fundamental principle, and uh, I'm very glad that this was extended because through this program that now we can expand again in Northern Rakhine, we can try to start create conditions for people to return. And if they return, we can be there, present. And this is very, very important. However, we have to be realistic. This will require a lot of engagement with the Myanmar authorities, federal authorities, state authorities, or provincial, sorry, provincial authorities in Northern Rakhine in order for this to, to, to happen, to be meaningful, and we intend to continue to do that for humanitarian purposes, of creating better conditions, foster the coexistence between the communities. These were the big problems that you know, caused eventually the crisis of 2017 that we are all very familiar about. So I wanted to make that point first to clarify. Second, uh, I, uh, of course, some impressions from Cox's Bazaar, and the Kutupalong refugee camp. First of all, once again, taking advantage of your presence here to convey my heartfelt thanks to the government and people of Bangladesh for continuing to bear the greatest responsibility in hosting one million people, almost one million refugees from uh, uh, Myanmar, in uh, most of them still in Kutupalong, in the big mega refugee camp that I visited on Sunday. And uh, thanks also for the excellent cooperation that we have with all aspects, all branches of the government in Bangladesh. <coughs> Civilian and military and security branches, because of course, this is a very big operation. Um, and uh, 
Through that cooperation, I have to say, very remarkable achievements have been, uh, have been made. Uh, that I have already seen in the past, you know, avoiding major natural disaster or impact of natural disasters in that very fragile area, but also a very high percentage of vaccination against corona among the refugee population, thanks